Hello and welcome to our first video lesson on Chapter 17, Lipid Metabolism. This lesson will involve a brief overview of lipid metabolism and also a consideration of some of the diseases associated with disruptions in lipid metabolism. In our overview of lipid metabolism, let's consider the relevance of study into this area. First of all, it's the most important form of energy storage. To equal the energy contained in 10 pounds of stored fat, we'd have to store 67 and a half pounds of hydrated glycogen. So if we relied primarily on glycogen metabolism, we'd all weigh a great deal more. We can also see the importance of this form of energy if we consider the relative proportion of carbohydrates, protein, and fat that we store as potential energy reserves. I would remind you in this case that a kilocalorie is one dietary calorie. In other words, when you look at a nutritional label and it gives you the calorie content of food, those are actually kilocalories, scientifically speaking. So in this case, we store approximately 650 kilocalories of carbohydrates compared to 25,000 kilocalories worth of protein but 100,000 kilocalories of fat. So clearly our bodies consider fat its most important form of energy storage and we'll see why as we move along in our lessons. There are three possible sources for fatty acids. First of all, the dietary triacylglycerols, or TAGs, that we consume on a daily basis and take into our diet. There are also those that are synthesized by the liver, and then finally those that are stored in adipocytes, or fat cells. Another relevance to, of our study of lipid metabolism is the fact that there are many diseases that are associated with disruptions in lipid metabolism. We will consider primarily atherosclerosis, which is a combination of two words, athero meaning paste and sclerosis meaning hardness. So the word literally means hard paste. Not a good word when you're considering the accumulation of that hard paste in arteries and veins. We have an illustration or photograph of an atherosclerotic plaque on the right of the screen. Not a good condition for an artery to be in. As you can see, the flow through this artery must be greatly constricted. This is a slow progressive disease. It's characterized by hardening of the arteries and this is due to lipid accumulation in the walls of the blood vessel. About half of all deaths in the U.S. is linked to this vascular disease. It is initiated by the body's normal response uh, to inflammation. As the lipids begin to accumulate in the cell wall, leukocytes or white blood cells do their job to indicate a problem of inflammation. But then the plaque forms that contains cholesterol, dead macrophages, and calcified muscle. And now we have a problem with this plaque formation in the blood vessel. Not only is there a problem with restricted blood flow, and therefore probably a problem with blood pressure, but the greater problem is when that plaque ruptures. It releases a clot. If that clot proceeds to the heart and disrupts circulation there, the result is a heart attack. If it proceeds to disrupt circulation to the brain, we have a stroke. And so you can see that in this case, if we consider all the heart attacks and strokes in the U.S. associated with atherosclerosis, we can see why about half of all deaths are related to this one particular disease. Lipids are deposited by particles known as lipoproteins. So in our next video lesson, we want to see how these lipids are packaged for delivery to and from the cell.